Hello, this is Bradley Needham. I'm going to be talking about lambdas in C++. Now you can think of a lambda as a shorthand syntax for creating a functor right at the location where it is instantiated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through a few examples of using a functor to customize the behavior of a library algorithm and then switch the code to use a lambda instead of the functor. So let's start off with a simple example. I have a vector which is a collection of integers and I'm going to use the COUNTIF algorithm here to count how many of the um, integers in this collection happen to be odd. So using the COUNTIF algorithm I have to specify the range that I want it to go over and that's the beginning of the collection to the end of the collection. And then I need to specify a functor, basically a predicate, that's going to say which one of these items happen to be odd or not. So in order to do that I'm going to create myself a functor here. I'm going to name it is odd. So in order for this to be a functor the main thing I need to do is have it uh, overload the operator paren paren. So in this case this is a predicate so it's going to return a bool and the parameter list I'm going to get past an integer and the implementation is pretty straightforward I'm just going to return x modulus 2. So down here when I use it now I'm going to go ahead and just create an instance. So I'm going to instantiate an instance of the is odd functor uh, by calling the default constructor here. So I'm going to say is odd uh, print print and that basically invokes the default constructor creates me an unnamed temporary uh, of type is odd and that can be used internal to the countif algorithm to determine if an element happens to be odd. So I'm going to go ahead and run that and sure enough I get out that integers that are odd six. All right so if I wanted to do then turn around and say well now I want to calculate if it's even right I might create a new functor uh, let's go ahead and copy this one and again I will just name that one is even and to change that I would have to change this to the opposite right not modulus 2 and then I could calculate down here if it happens to be even and change my output and then run it and of course there are also six even integers in there so I'm going to go ahead and change that to add another even integer here or actually add another odd integer let's add another odd integer we'll still get back six even integers um, if I take out this one we'll get back five even integers okay so this is working now what I want to do is I want to get rid of having to provide all of this extra stuff here, declaring this entire structure and the overloading of operator paren paren, when all I really want to do is simply return, right, this little bit, this little expression. And it'd be nice if I could just put that right here where I'm doing my COUNTIF algorithm. I can do that with lambdas. All right, so what I do is I specify to the compiler that I'm going to create a lambda, and that's just the square brackets. I say open square bracket, close square bracket, and that tells the compiler I'm going to create a lambda. Then I basically put in the parameter list, int x, which is going to be of the function that I'm creating. And you notice that, of course, the rest of this implementation is pretty much follows everything after operator paren paren. So I basically say put in what I had after operator paren paren, and I return not the modulus of 2, x modulus 2. And I run that again, and I get the five uh, even integers. If I switch this and make this, say, 26, then I get six even integers down here as well. Okay. Now look what I've eliminated the code. This is pretty straightforward. This is exactly what I'm doing. It's telling me this is what I'm doing at this point in code. I'm counting if um, each element satisfies this requirement of not uh, modulus 2, then I'm going to count that element in my collection. And I get to get rid of all of this stuff for my is odd and my is even. And then I can change this if I wanted it to be um, odd again. I just get rid of the not and I run it. And of course, and I have the number of odd all right, so there's a simple lambda, but sometimes let's say, well, I want to actually count if not just uh, against modulus 2, maybe I want to have a multiple. I want to be able to do a different multiple, maybe ones that are a multiple of 5. Well, and I might have a uh, variable that somebody's going to pass in to me and tell me what the multiple is that I'm going to be looking at. So if I want to do that as a functor, I might create it like this. So class is multiple of. And then I need something to hold the value, which is the multiple I'm going to be using to compare it with. So int, and then I'm going to have a constructor where I can pass in the value that I'm going to be using. Okay, and then of course now I need to overload operator print print. This is still a predicate, so I'm still going to return bool, and I'm still taking an int as a parameter. But now I'm going to return whether x modulus multiple, right? So I'm going to actually return the not of that. And the reason I'm returning the opposite, of course, is that if x is evenly divisible by, say, 5, then it will, this will, expression will return 0, and I want it actually to tell, say that that's true, and so I not it, so it returns true. So then down here, in my count if, I basically have to create an instance of my functor, 
and I pass in the multiple, the value to the constructor that's going to be being used. So now I'm going to say integers that are a multiple, okay, and then I go ahead and run this, the so ones that are multiple of five, and it should come at integers that are a multiple of five, four. So there's four that are a multiple of five. If I want to check for multiples of three, I simply change this value, multiples of three, and of course it shows up here as four. So then how do I convert this to a lambda? Because now I have this extra um, variable that I want to basically pass to the lambda. So first off, let's see how we might write the lambda. Again, we're going to specify, hey, here's our lambda compiler, and we're going to specify the parameter list. And the implementation, again, is, is just the same pretty much as the implementation you had in here. So there's the implementation, but of course m multiple, I don't have m multiple. I do have multiple here, right? This is the one, the local variable here, but I'm getting a compiler error and it's basically saying, I see that you're maybe trying to use a local variable here, but you haven't captured anything. And that's one thing you need to do for lambdas. If you have to, if you want to use a local variable in your lambda expression, you have to capture it. And if you think about it, that's exactly the same thing we did here with our own functor class, right? This here is me capturing the multiple variable so that I can use it later in my class, right? I have to provide some space to hold on to it, and then when I construct it, I basically pay, pass that value to the constructor so that I can make a copy of what I'm using. So that's the same thing you're going to do here with Lambda, and the way you tell the compiler that you want to do that with your Lambda is inside the square brackets, you tell it what um, locals you actually want to capture, what variables you want to capture. So I say multi, I say that this variable I want to capture. Once I say that, now I no longer get that compiler error that I was getting before, and let's change this to multiples of two, and if I run that, there we go, the multiples of two there are five multiples of two. And again, if I switch this back to multiples of five and run it, I get, okay, so multiples of five, there are four. So basically in here, I had to say I wanted to capture this local variable in order to use it internal. And it's the same type of thing you're doing with your functor object up here, right? Just like I said, it's kind of a shorthand syntax for creating a functor at, at the point of instantiation. Another way to do this is to simply specify equal, and that's basically a default capture mechanism. It tells the compiler any local that you find in here that you don't recognize, go ahead and capture it. I want you to capture it this way. So this will, of course, work as well. I switch this back to, say, multiples of three, and I run it, and I get multiple of three, uh, four. Okay. What other case? Another case, something else we might want to use. So again, we can get rid of this functor object because we don't need any more. We're using a lambda here. But now, let's say that I want to, maybe instead of count something, I want to sum up all of these variables. I want to sum up um, all the numbers in my collection. So instead of my multi, I'm going to have a sum, and I'm going to start at sum at zero, and I don't need my count anymore because I'm not counting this. And since I'm not counting, I'm going to use a different algorithm. I'm going to use a for each. So for each element in my collection, so again, the range is from begin to end, I want to do something. I basically want to sum up the, uh, the variables here. So I'm going to change this to something like the sum is. Okay, and then I need to specify something, a function here for the algorithm to apply to each element in the uh, collection. So what I need to do here, I'll create a functor again for this. So class, uh, let's call it sum up. And he's going to have to maintain an internal reference to the variable that is being summed up. All right, so in this case, I have to say, an integer reference, which is the sum, because he's going to be manipulating this and wants to be able to have it accessible after the usage of the, um, the functor itself. And then, of course, I have to do what? I have to overload operator print print, operator print print. Again, it's passing in an integer. And the actual implementation is simply to take m sum and sum it with the value passed in. So down here, Again, to create my instance of sum up by sum up and passing in sum as its parameter. If I run that, then it gives me the sum is 95. Okay, so that sums up the values. Okay, so now how would I do this with a lambda? You can think of it as a shorthand syntax for creating this same functor here. And so I need to realize that I'm grabbing this thing by reference. So first, let's do the simple implementation here of the lambda. I basically specify I have a lambda, and it's going to take a parameter int x, and the implementation is going to be to take the sum and add x to it, right? Add, take the sum and 
plus equal x to it. Now, if you notice, of course, I get my little error. I'm getting a compiler error, and we know, oh, well, that's because you're not capturing the local variable. Here's the local variable, and you want to capture it. So let's say I put sum here to capture the local variable. Notice I still get an error, but this error is a little bit different. And the reason why is when I capture a variable like this, I'm capturing it by value. And if I capture this by value, that means that this sum in here is actually a copy of the other sum that's out here. And that's going to be a problem, right? If this happens to be a copy, once I go through all this summing up, this value here on the outer scope will still be zero. And that's probably not the behavior you want. And that's why this is an error. So what I need to do is I need to specify that I'm going to get sum, but I want to grab it by reference. So I specify that I'm capturing sum by reference. And now the compiler error goes away and I can run it and I get the sum of 95. And of course, if I change the values a little bit, I can run it again and the sum is now 70. I can see that the value comes out correctly. Okay, so again, you can also do a default capture by reference by simply specifying the ampersand there and that will work as well. If I specify a new value here and run it, again, I get the sum of 87 and that's correct. Okay, I just wanna talk really quickly a little bit more about this um, error that you get when you try to catch it by value. Right? And like I said, if you try to capture this by value, here I'm using the default capture by value, the compiler is going to say, hey, this probably isn't what you want because you're trying to manipulate this value at the outer scope and it's not going to work because you're passing it by um, you're, you're passing it by copy, right? You're capturing it by copy and not by reference. If that is really what you did want and you do want this to still turn out to be zero and you do want to manipulate this guy internally, you can do something by specifying the lambda as being mutable. And if you specify the lambda as being mutable, that means that I can change these things even when I capture them by value or copy them. Now what's going to happen is that all those changes are not going to be visible external. So if I run this, I should get the sum is zero. So I run it again and of course the sum is zero because I've captured it. And that's why you probably are not looking to put make your lambda mutable and why by default lambdas are not mutable which means that you'll get this error. It's always good to get compile time errors rather than runtime errors. And this is the compiler helping you out and saying, hey, I'm not sure that that's actually what you mean. What you probably really wanted to do was capture the items by reference because you're trying to manipulate the value to something. So one other thing, if we go back to the count uh, if. So if I'm going to do a count if again, and I'm going to say integers that are odd, what I might want to do, notice in our lambda expression so far, if I create that uh, let me get rid of this functor up here because we don't need it. If I create, if I use this countif again and I want to find out the odd integers, I can create my lambda, straightforward lambda int x and return x modulus 2. So if I run that, of course, I'll get the number of, of integers that are odd in this case. But, but notice that we didn't specify the return value of this lambda. Okay. The compiler is actually assuming the return value of this lambda and he's assuming it to be an int and then the int is automatically being type converted to a bool and that's why this is working. Uh, if you actually put more than one line of code in your lambda, so let's say your lambda is more than just a single line, so we want to make it a little bit prettier to read, right? We're going to sp spread it out a bit so that we can tell that we have a lambda here. If I have, let's say I wanted to do a little bit extra, like maybe I want to uh, determine whether it is odd and then print out whether this is odd or not. I'm going to return here this as well. Now I have more than one line of code in my lambda and you notice I get a little bit of a compiler warning here and this is because the spec really says that if uh, my lambda is more than one line and more than just a simple return statement like it was in the past where it was just a simple return statement the compiler will not try to figure out what the return type of the lambda is and you have to specify it. The only reason I bring this up is because in order to specify the return type of the lambda, it's a little tricky uh, because you can't specify it before these uh, square brackets because the square brackets are what tell the compiler that this is a lambda expression that you're writing. So there's a new uh, return type syntax, which is basically called a trailing return type, where after you've declared the parameter list, you put a little arrow and then the type of the return value. So what is the return value going to be? In this case, the return value is going to be bool. So instead of putting the return type in front of the expression, you put it after. So now there's no compiler warning or compiler error, and I can run this, and it prints out, of course, everything that I want, which is basically telling me 
number one is odd, number two is even, three is odd, four is even, all the way down to when I get down to 17 is odd, and then the number of odd integers is seven. Okay, I hope this helps.